Good morning, rising family. Good morning. Everybody excited to see the sun shining yes. and it's warm out. Praise Spring God. is really here, finally. Praise God. We've been looking forward to this for a really long time. We're sick of all the rain. So I hope you guys all have some beautiful plants this afternoon when you leave church. Get out there and enjoy nature. I'm so glad to have all of you here, our beautiful family. I've talked about this a long time ago. I always feel like this reminds me of my family when I was a kid. We always had Sunday dinner. This is like our Sunday dinner with our family, right? Yes. Everybody's here to support each other, and we all love each other, and you know that this is a safe place. So we really appreciate all of you, and we're so happy to be here with you. Of course, we love our beautiful risettes and their beautiful voices. <laughs> Yay for the risettes and our audio team in the back. We give them a praise. Okay, I just have a couple quick announcements. <coughs> Excuse me. I must say, you guys have been very good. A lot of people have filled out their forms with the updated information, but there is a few that still haven't filled it out. So in your programs, you should see a copy of this. Please make sure you fill it out and leave it in the connect corner in the back of the foyer. Because we need to get everybody totally updated so our new pastor can, there's the connect corner, so our new pastor can get to know everyone. So it's really important to us. Thank you. Um, my other announcement is Next week, we are going to be holding a meeting right after church for the activities team. So anyone that's involved in the activities team, we hope that you can come for a short meeting right after services. So, you know, we'll take like a 15-minute break after services, and then we'll get together downstairs because we need to go over some reorganization plans for the activities team. Also, if anyone's interested in being involved that isn't in the group yet, you're definitely welcome to come. We're also looking for a few new people to help with greeting at the door. We need to get some things lined up so not one person always has to do that job. We need backup people and all that. So these are the kind of things we're working on as the activities team because we do have a change in the team. Um, as you may know now, our lovely Al and Vanessa have been granted a new home and they're gonna be leaving us and we will miss them terribly. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's gonna be very hard to be here without Al and Vanessa, but we love you very much and we're very happy for you. Amen. And we're just thrilled that you're finding your dream home on that 12 acres, and Al's going to be out there with his John Deere having a good old time. And he said, we can pitch tents and we can have retreats in their place in Virginia. Oh, nice. We're going to just all come down there and swap you. Yeah, we'll come down. Maybe we'll do a summer retreat to Al and Vanessa. <laughs> yes, Vanessa's going to be leaving the weekend of May 10th, and Al's going to be moving at the end of July. So, But Vanessa's going to come up and visit in between. I'm sure, because she's going to want to keep track of what Al's doing, <laughs> right? <laughs> of course. Don't worry, Vanessa. We'll keep an eye on them, okay? <laughs> right, we'll keep an eye on Al. Yeah. Al's not going to be able to get away with anything, right? <laughs> okay, well, that's all my news. So now I would like to present the rice. Praise God. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit and the freedom that we have in it. Jesus, we invite you to stand and dance and worship with us. Hallelujah. Whoa. Ooh. Step out of the shadows. Step out of the grave. Break into the wild and don't be afraid. 
run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love. For the spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Yes. Yay. Freedom. Bring all of your burdens. Bring all of your scars. Come back to communion. Come back to the start. Yeah. Run. Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love. For the spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. You hear those chains? Chains, chains will, will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, lives made whole. Hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes. Where the spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love. For the spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be living God, yeah. we feel your presence, yes, Lord. Lord. Jesus. 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 Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Ooh. 
come and speak to us, Lord. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Because when you speak and when you move and when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what we see. And when you come in the room, and when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see. It changes everything. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we're leaning into all you are. Everything else can wait. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, come now and breathe upon our hearts. Come now and have your way. Because when you speak and when you move and when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see, and when you come in the room, and when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see. to us, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh. 
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord, oh, we feel it. And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence your presence lord and holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord, and I've tasted, and I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord. and holy spirit you are welcome here come flood glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord yes God your presence Lord declare this with us let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've provided for us. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit just fill this room, Lord. Yes, God. Let your presence just overflow the, the, to the rafters, Lord. Yes, Lord. God. And we just ask, Lord, that you would be with our pastor as he gives the word. Yes, yes God. And we, I just ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds for the word that you have given him to speak to us. Yes. And we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You can have a seat if you're standing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let me add my welcome this morning. I, I'm, if you don't know me, I'm Al Baradas. I'm one of the pastors here at The Rising. Amen. Beautiful day outside. Amen. Thank Beautiful. God. Love it, right? Woo! So we're going to continue this morning to worship the Lord as we do, as our custom and our practice, by hearing from you guys. Prayer and praise requests, okay? This is a serious part of our worship together. We pray for each other, and we glorify God and what he's doing in each of our lives. Amen, right? Because he's pretty busy, right? Yes. <laughs> he's I don't know how he does it, but he keeps track of all of us, right? Amen. Amen. Praise God, Thank okay? You God. So, start. Anybody? Oh, I got Taylor right here with the praise. Wear a prayer. So, I recently committed to a college, and I've been I'm going to Rutgers Church. All right. Go oh, Rutgers. Scarlet Knights. Yeah, I'm going to play volleyball there and then psychology. Cool. Nice. Very good. Congratulations. Yes. I don't have my minor yet. Yeah. I'm either, it's either going to be criminal justice or psychology. Okay. Nice. Nice. All right. All right. Just like Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're partial to criminal justice in the yeah. Bar yeah. Bar yeah. family as well. We got Brenda. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Not many. <laughs> no, we love you, Brenda. Oh, yeah. you, Brenda. I'm just going to say good morning. I just like to praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for getting me here today. It's been almost impossible, but I made it. And I'd like to thank him for all he's doing in my daughter's life. She has miles to go, but she's staying strong. Please pray for her to stay encouraged and blessed and know where the blessings are coming from. Amen. And for God, for her to know of the blood that was shed on that cross for her. Amen. Yeah. And um, please, I want her to keep that in check. It's so important. She has a lot stacked against her, but God yes. is so good. Yes. All the time. And uh, yes. Mr. Wayne is holding his own. Kayla's father. We don't have any bad reports, so that's good news. And they're going to let me know on Friday when they test his blood again where exactly the levels are. So thank you all. And the BB family says thank you very much. And please continue to pray for the loss of him. Thank you. Mr. Gray. I like. <laughs> the mic died. Others? Others? Oh, wait a minute. Where are we going? Yeah. I got Melissa in the back with a hand. Glad to give me the thumbs up from Jesus. Okay. okay. I'm coming up for prayer. <laughs> so, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My morning um, began with a phone call from my partner, Vito's sister in law, to say that we need to pray for his brother, Vincent, who was auto racing last night in Cecil, Maryland, and is now at John Hopkins <gasps> Hospital their burn unit. Oh, my. So, according to his wife, he's okay. He'll be okay because he knows the Lord and the Lord will heal him. 
so I'm asking for prayers that all the doctors that touch him will use all of their skills and knowledge to heal him. I ask for prayers continuously for my mother, who we know is battling cancer, and she's really hit with the flu right now. Ooh. It's very, very bad. Ooh. And I'm asking for prayer for myself for strength. It's hard. I'm struggling. But I know God has all of this exactly in front of us. He has it all. So, last prayer request I have is for my brother and his wife, that their travels will be well, and that you will be back here preaching for them. Because Amen. you're the best. So, <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> so it's okay. Just so you know. Not a problem. When the Eagles play the Giants, you have a place to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll be expecting that. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, Cyrus. Cyrus. Uh, a prayer request for myself and my husband is Carol. Prayers to the I'm sorry, but uh, I was, you said tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Anybody else? Oh, Irene. I have a praise report. Last okay. week I asked you to pray for my neighbor, Trish. Um, she did have the thyroid cancer removed, and she came home the next day, and I stopped over with flowers and soup, and she was like, I feel great. She was running around. I mean, we expected her to be laid up for a little bit, you would think, but no, nope, she was out running around the parking lot the next day. And I said, that's because the drugs haven't worn out. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but literally, two days later, she already was doing everything on her own. And she said that it really meant a lot to her to know that the Rising did pray for her and he really appreciated our prayers. Amen. Amen. I have a prayer request. I would like to request prayer for my father-in-law, Anthony Martelli, who was having chest pains on Friday night and was taken to Cooper. Um, they didn't find anything, but he's had, he has ongoing heart issues. And also um, prayer request for my daughter, Aubrey Rain, who is having abdominal pain trying to figure out if it's, it would happen after dance, so I'm not sure if she pulled a muscle, but I might take her to the ER urgent care today, but just prayers that everything is okay. Please. Okay, you can do that. Okay. I have a uh, prayer request. Oh. <laughs> um, Karen? Yes, I'd, I'm asking for prayer for my mom, Dolores. Um, she hasn't been feeling well for several weeks and she's been having abdominal pain and um, we need to get her scheduled for an ultrasound. So I just ask that you would pray for her that she would start to feel better. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Okay, let's do it. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord God, uh, we just thank you and give you glory and praise for your mercy, your grace. Your mercy is new every morning, Lord. And here we are again as our custom, Lord, to ask you for your grace and your mercy and your care, Father, for I know we know you love us beyond anything that we can imagine. Uh, you loved us so much you sent yourself down to die for us on the yeah. cross, and what more can we give, uh, what more can we say uh, for God that loved us so much to do the sacrifice himself yes. for all of us. And Lord, we just, we just thank you for your character and loving us the way you do. So, Lord, um, Again, we have some requests here for our brothers and sisters or they're going through some things, Lord, in their lives. Uh, Father, we, um, we pray for Melissa and uh, her, her ask her request for strength, dear God. Uh, you, you know, she can vocalize what she's going through, but no, none, of, none of us can know what's in her heart. But you know what's in her heart. You know right down most intimate 
fears, concerns, dear God, you know all that is in her heart. And Father, I pray that you address every single one of those concerns right now in Jesus' name by the Spirit of God that dwells within inside of her. Uh, we pray for her mom, Lord, and she has the cancer and the flu. We just pray your continued hand of healing upon her. Um, this this uh, her brother and her brother-in-law, um, Vincent, again, burn unit. I uh, don't know exactly all what happened there, Lord. Don't have to. Just our sister requested prayer for him. Dear God, your hand of healing again be upon Vincent, Lord, to get him back uh, to complete health and right standing. Dear God, we give you glory and praise for that. Um, we pray for uh, Anthony Martelli, chest pain, uh, heart issues. Dear God, again, we lift him up. Uh, your grace and mercy, your, your, just bl your hand of blessing uh, be upon him. Dear God, Aubrey as well. And uh, Dolores, or both abdominal pain issues. Father, we ask again, uh, you touch them, dear God, and make sure that uh, there's nothing structurally wrong uh, with either of them. Father, we pray that, uh, again, your hand of healing again, uh, uh, be upon them both. Bless them mightily, Lord, in Jesus' name. Um, pray for Sister Iris going through a surgery tomorrow, dear God. And Lord, uh, we just, uh, she's such a blessing uh, here. Uh, rising, dear God. We, we love her, Lord, and, and we just ask, uh, uh, there's nobody that loves her like you do, uh, Father, and again, we just ask that you guide those surgeons uh, to a successful outcome. Uh, she's mentioning other surgeries, Lord. We just continue to lift up her whole uh, health condition to you, dear God, that you bless her and keep her, Father, in Jesus' name. Um, and for the, the rest of the requests, dear God, and maybe some people are thinking, in their minds. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Father, you know all the things that are in our hearts, yes. Um, yes, yes. everything that's uh, weighing us down. We may not verbalize them, Father. We, we just ask your spirit who knows uh, the depths uh, of, of our uh, concerns and our, and our pains and our, our cares. Lord, you, know, you care for us so deeply, dear God. Uh, you love us. We thank you for that love. We just ask your Holy Spirit comfort all those that have those requests that they never, maybe never even spoke this morning, but they're, it's on their heart right now as they're thinking about it right now as we sit here. Dear God, that you just meet them, Father, at the point of their need, whatever it is. We pray. We thank you for the, the spirit. We, we sang it this morning, Lord. Our, our desire is to know you more, to be overwhelmed by your presence. This is one of the ways we start, is to just experience in this quiet the move of the Holy Ghost. God, in each person sitting here in this place, and if you're watching by um, uh, the, you know, the internet, Lord, is to be the same for those people as if they're sitting right here. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, dear God, for what you have done, what you're continuing to do. We pray for the rising in general. Uh, we're, we're so excited, Lord, by the spirit, your spirit that's moving in us right now. I, um, I pray for those people that are coming to the rising, dear God. Uh, you, you would call all those that uh, you have touched and are now leading here to this place to find not church as usual, not church as they have experienced before, but a new thing. You're doing something new. And Lord, it is exciting to see what you are doing in the midst of this, this small handful of believers here in Morristown. And Lord, we just give you the glory and praise, and we ask for your strength, we ask for your will to be done, and we ask you to lead us, Holy Spirit, to where our trust is truly without borders. Yes. We'll give you the glory, we we'll give you the praise, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, at this time... I would ask Dave and Al to come forward uh, as an opportunity for you to give as the Lord has led you uh, to give. It's an opportunity. Go ahead, guys. Um, again, we, we do this as a, a way for you to say thank you to the Lord. Again, we, our, our tact is that we don't give out of obligation. Nope. Do not do that. Do not create any obligation. You have no obligation to give. God says he loves a cheerful giver. 
as God has blessed you, you can bless the Lord and bless the rising. Obviously, we have needs here at the rising um, that cost money to, to run the ministry. And uh, we just thank you for your willingness and faithfulness in giving this morning. <clears throat> so we, everybody now? Or the, uh, Dave? Good? Okay. All right, well, let's just pray, and we'll continue our, our worship service this morning. Lord God, we give you the glory, the praise, and honor. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts that have been given. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for us to tangibly give uh, to the work of the rising, to your work, dear God. Uh, it's one and the same. As you have called us, we need resources to do what you've called us to do, and we thank you, Lord, for everybody who participates, and we ask your blessing on those who are now are participating by the physical giving, Lord, of what they can give. Uh, thank you for moving in their lives. Thank you for the gratitude in their hearts that spur them to give. And uh, Lord, we just are, are, are just looking forward to the Spirit's move as we continue to grow this ministry here at the Rising. In years to come. So we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, at this time, I will call our pastor up for some pastoral announcements before he speaks. Let me get one of these. Let the church say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Somebody ought to give God a hallelujah. hallelujah. Just because he's good. Amen. So for the first thing I want to do in our pastoral announcements, if we have any visitors, first timers or long timers, long time no see, <laughs> Could you give us a hand wave or, or let us know that you're in the building? There we go. We have a visitor in the house. I didn't catch your name earlier. Do you mind just sharing your name? Sharon. Let's all give Sharon a hearty welcome. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. If we have any visitors online, I need you to go ahead and throw your favorite emoji in the chat. Let us just put I'm here in the chat. And so when I go back and I look at the, the comments, I'll be able to see, all right, we had some visitors in the chat, but we are glad to have you. And I pray that something, whether it's happened already, whether it was the songs or the prayers or something that's about to happen with more songs and the sermon, I pray that something blesses you on this Christian journey because we all need to do this together. Amen? Amen. 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 But we thank God for you being here. Yeah. There are some birthdays that we want to recognize. Amen. Amen. Some happy belated birthdays, right? Sister Iris, yes. right? No, you don't have to stand. We're not going to embarrass anybody. <laughs> Last Sunday, they celebrated at Longhorn. I'm mad because I didn't get any steak. There wasn't no leftovers. Oh. No, but I'm just joking. <laughs> I, I'm, it was good. Mm, I, I enjoy a good it's Longhorn so Steakhouse. Good. And Sister Veronica, who I don't... Oh, there she is. There we go. There we go. I almost missed you. Happy belated. It was April 10th, 12th, excuse me. And I pray that you celebrated like a rock star. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I want to recognize those birthdays. Sister Irene's point about the uh, connect cards, about the roster. The more I know, the more we can do. So I was able to look and see... Ah, and I know we have a couple birthdays coming up. Oh, I'm getting a signal from the back. Oh, okay. No, no, no signal from the back. But uh, continue to connect with us. We're almost all the way through our connect cards. Our roster is almost complete. But the more information we have, the more we can do and connect and celebrate each other. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Let's go to our next slide. We have a couple of newsworthy notes, right? You don't go as far as your dream. You go as far as your team. Amen. Let me say that again so that resonates with you. You don't go as far as your dream, your goals, your ambitions, but you go as far as your team. And so one of the things that we have been doing as a team, as a ministry council, is we've been, and the reason why I'm telling you this is I want the whole team to know what's going on behind the scenes. Amen. So the ministry council meets and prays. That's the only thing on the agenda on Tuesdays. And then we've been meeting on Wednesdays. Now, because of those meetings, there's a lot of ideas coming forth. But we need your input. 
We need your say so. We need what to, we need to know what the spirit of the living God has put on your heart. So we're going to be putting out surveys. They may be in your bulletins. Give me a hand wave if you use email. Anybody? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. If not, if you don't use email, if you don't put it like this. Yeah, we're, we're going to get it to you. We we going we going to get you the information whether we have to put the surveys in your bulletin and you put them in the offering basket, right? Or there's emails with survey monkeys that we can do electronically, and then it'll tally the results without having to rely on my math. But we have Sister <laughs> Irene to, to make sure that the math is correct. And, right? But we want your input. This is our church. This ain't Vlad's church. This is God's church. This is our church, and we're going to do this thing together. Amen. We rise together. Amen? Amen. 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 So look forward to those surveys. I got one more uh, bit of newsworthy notes. The youth ministry, I guess she went down already, but uh, Sister Danielle and Sister Taylor and Deborah will please meet me after the service downstairs. And now I'm going to call up Al and Vanessa. Right? Aww. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, can you hold this while, to show why you're the good Al? But... From the moment I stepped foot in this building, I got nothing but love from this people. And it's just a, just an inch, just a taste of what you've experienced throughout your time here with them. They are pillars of the rising community. We Amen. wish them well. We love them. We, we want to hold on to them, but God has something great for them. Grandchildren, life, 12 acres, abundant blessings. Yeah. But uh, I told them they're going to start the rising south. <laughs> they're gonna invite people. Yeah. They're gonna invite people to their home to watch the service on Sundays, and they're gonna be ones the ones throwing those amens in the chat and having and building the ministry from down south. Amen. Amen. But we just want to say we love you, and let me just do a quick prayer. Father, we thank you for every life represented here, but we also thank you for these two, these two special ones. Al, who cleans and works hard in the church, and, and uh, Vanessa, who led the activities team and was instrumental in so much love being spread throughout this church. Bless them utterly and profoundly. We will miss them, but we will not disconnect from them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We love you. Amen. Let, me, let me see that one more time. Let me get one of those. Yeah. Bless you. Good Al. Good Al. Here you go. Thank you. Put that over there. Yep. Well, I think Sister uh, Denise can make a, another copy, but that one's mine. Okay. You got the original? <laughs> All right. Next, last slide, please. So, I've been asking you to fill out contact cards and connect cards so we can connect with you. But also, I want you to be able to connect with me. You called me to pastor you. You've called me to be here to be a shepherd. So if you need to take a photograph of that or write that down, but that is my email address. I'm going to leave that up there for a few moments while I look at you and smile. But <laughs> Vlad at the rising at gmail.com, and you can ask the ministry council. I am pretty uh, responsive when you email me. But if you need to text or call, I have a dedicated brand new church number. That is my church cell phone, and it is 856-214-1285. If you want to text me and say amen or hallelujah, we take those two. Amen? amen. So, oh, oh, do I see, uh, oh, uh, tall one, my love, my heart. <laughs> can you, so they can take a photograph of that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a, that's a cell phone. That is actually right here. So, you know, if you want to start now, I have it on silent because, you know, the only one that can call on me during service is Jesus. So, but, uh, <clears throat> no, we love you. We want heaven to smile upon you. And now we will shift back into the high point of our worship service. So the next voices you will hear will be that of the Risettes singing us into the glory of God. And then the Holy Spirit will speak the words of the one true and living God through me, through the sermon. Let everybody who's excited about that say amen. 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 Woo! Amen. Go ahead, Percy. Jesus.
Jesus. Jesus, show us your glory, Lord.
Chains fall, fear bow, here, now, Jesus, you change everything. Come on and worship now. Come on now. Here, yes. hope found, here, now, Jesus, you change everything. Go ahead and worship him. If he was here and now, if you knew that your situation was dark, if you knew your situation was down, but he turned it around here, now, chains fall. Who was bound? Who was messed up? Who was down and out? Who was in the dark? And God made the chains fall. Oh, let's worship him, worship him, worship him. Fall. Fear. Bound. Declare it. Here. Here. Now. Jesus, you change everything. Lies. Heal. Hope. Found. Here. Here. Now. Jesus, you change everything. Yes. Who did he heal? Did he heal you? Did he give you hope? Did he give you light in the darkness? Did he touch you when you were weeping and the tears wouldn't stop streaming? Yes. But he blessed you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise team, you can go ahead and take your seats. I'll call you back shortly when it's time to celebrate and close this sermon down. Amen. To God be the glory. We thank you for the praise team's worship. Give them one more hand. Now give yourselves one more hand because you're blessed by the presence of God that's here right now. We've got birthdays, we've got celebrations, we've got praise reports, we've got prayer requests. We are ready for service. And Al is crying, so we know it's the right time and the right place. Amen. Amen. I am ready to preach. The projection team, the soundboard, the Missy on the tele... The telestrator, the, the you know the the beautiful uh, streaming ministry back there. We are ready to roll. So, Sister Denise is going to put the verses up. I will then read them. We will pray and then we will preach, and God will move. We will hear from the Holy Spirit over the next two hours. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> over the next few moments, we'll be glad to hear what God is saying to us through me. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Love that. With, with authority. Amen. The word of the Lord will be found in the minor prophets record from Hosea. We will read two full chapters of Hosea. They're short. Easy, easy. They're short. Right. And then we'll read two verses in the, in the uh, letter to the church at Galatia. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Hosea, son of Beeri, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, go marry, the, the kids are downstairs, right? Okay. Go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, the land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and, con and she conceived, catch that, she conceived and bore him a son, bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day, I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, call her lo Rama, which means not loved, for I will no longer show love to Israel that I should at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to Judah, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen, but I, the Lord their God, will save them. After she weaned lo Ruama, Gomer had another son. Then the Lord said, call him lo -Ami, which means not my people, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the Israelites, now see, that, you got to catch that yet. 
Yet, the Israelites will be like sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, they will be called children of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will come together. They will appoint one leader and will come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. This is chapter 2, verse 1. The Lord said to me, go, we didn't get it in there, but I want to read it. We're going to go chapter, Hosea chapter 2, verse 1. See, I, you got to understand, I drive Sister Denise crazy. I really do. I change the slides on her 45 times. She gets them loaded and ready. But, uh, and then I ask for, I call an audible late in the game. But uh, this is important, so I need to read Hosea chapter 2, verse 1. It's a very short verse. Say of your brothers, my people, and of your sisters, my loved one. All right. Now you can put chapter 3 up on the board. The Lord said to me, go show love to your wife again. This is the Lord speaking to Hosea. Go show love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer and a lethic of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days, and you must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will behave the same way towards you. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or household gods. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and they will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. Two more verses, and we could get to the sermon. This is Galatians. This is chapter 3, verses 13, 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessings given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We have said your, your Holy Spirit's present is welcome here. We adore you, and we are so excited about what you will say through me. And we will always be careful to give you the honor, the glory, and all the praise. And if you're in agreement, say amen. 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 I need to give you the sermonic text, and then I'll tag it up and give you the title. Hosea, chapter 3, verse 2. This is our sermon text. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver. And about a homer and a lethic, I put the, that's my quotes, I put it there, it tells you just how much barley this is, 430 pounds of barley. Amen? I'm going to tag the title on the text for you today, All Sales Are Final. All Sales Are Final. Who gets joy out of shopping? That, that, you got to tell me, who, who's the in-store shopper? Who are the in-store shoppers? What are your stores? Amazon. Am? Okay, that's, Amazon. so that's Boscos, Macy's, ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah, good taste, Macy's. What? Target, amen. That's my son's favorite. Hobby Lobby. What you got back there? Dollar Tree, amen. Hey, if it saves dollars, it saves cents, right? Makes sense. Makes dollars make sense, right? So those are our in-store purchases. I heard Amazon, right? Who, where's my Amazon shoppers? All right, okay, we got some. We got some. Amazon is the best, right? You're looking out the window. And then they go to the neighbor's house, and you're like, mm, I thought that was my package. But this shopping can be a lot of fun, right? You count the cost. There's the value, how good the product is in relationship to the cost, right? Then there's um, how to find it, right? Just looking, searching, right? Looking high and low. 
there's your taste and preference, right? Some people got like Versace taste, but dollar store money, right? <laughs> right? So there's a lot of things to consider when you shop, but there is a lot of fun to shopping, right? But one thing about shopping, whatever store you go into, you got to watch. Yeah, you got to pay or else my, 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 my coworkers will come get you. But uh, you got to watch the return policy, right? Some, if you leave the store, if you break it, you buy it. If you leave the store, that's it, right? Some people at some stores will tell you it'll be marked right on the, on the, on the wall. All sales are final. And what that means is if you buy it, it's yours forever, right? You can't exchange it. You can't return it. You can't do anything like that, right? There's, oh, we, we talked about a lot of different stores in terms of our, our shopping tastes, right, our sh where we like to shop. But there's another place that I didn't hear anybody mention, and it, it, for this sermon today, it's really, really on point. It's a pawn shop, okay? If you go to a pawn shop, there's three things you can do. You can buy, you can sell, or you can pawn, right? The thing about pawn shops is if you're buying, you can find great deals because somebody was probably in a tough spot and gave something really good and got very little money for it, all right? Some of us have been there. Amen? Amen? Now, if you sell, right, if you sell to a pawn shop, you're typically going to bring something you really value, and you're not going to get what it's worth. Right? But if you pawn, what pawning is, just in case you don't know, and for maybe somebody online or somebody who watches this who doesn't know, I like to explain things. If you pawn, what you're doing is you are loaning them the item that's typically high value, right? They are giving you cash on the spot for it, and they are holding it like a storage place for, they'll tell you what the monthly fees are. Now, you got to be careful because if you do this, the monthly fees legally in Texas can be up to 20%, right? So... Let me just break one down for you. You have a beautiful guitar. Guitar is like $400. You, you need money right now. You need fast cash right now. You, ain't gonna, you, know, you don't want to go through a loan application. You don't want to go to a bank. You don't want to do all that stuff. You just need the cash right now. So you sell this really, or you pawn this really nice guitar. Guitar is worth $400. The first thing they do is because it's not new, they're going to take 40% right off it. So your $400 guitar goes to $240 value in the pawn shop. Now, the amount of cash they're going to give you is re really one-third of the value. So for your $400 guitar, all you get is $80 cash, right? And every month, they hit you with the storage fee. There's taxes. There's other fees. There's a whole lot that goes into this pawn, stop, uh, this pawn shop pawning transaction, right? There is a lot of cost to being the, uh, to using a pawn shop. But what you have to realize is sometimes you need fast cash, right? And they're willing to do it quick. But if you don't redeem your guitar quick, right? 20%, five months you have now surpassed the original value of the guitar. In five months, that guitar is going to cost you more than the $400 it was worth new just to redeem it. Somebody say, pawn shops are costly. The cost rises really quick. Now, you ready to get a little bit deeper into this thing? I want to show you something about the human brain works because it will teach us how God is different. Right? There's a book. Last week we talked about books and people were excited about books. There was a book called Thinking, comma, Fast and Slow. Thinking, Fast and Slow. It's by Daniel Kahneman. And what he's teaching in this book is that there are two systems to our brain. Two systems. System one is fast and emotional. 
fast and emotional, right? If I tell you what's two plus two, what's the answer? System one. See how quick that was? System two is slow and deliberate. It is slow and logical. What is 17 times six? See? That's the difference. That's the difference, right? And why this is important, why this is important is because when we shop, when we shop, we are typically system one people. We are quick, we are fast and emotional. And what that does, think about, uh, uh, my wife doesn't like food shopping. I like food shopping. I like, anybody here like food shopping? (laughs) Right? Okay, me and Dom, Dom, right? We like food shopping. But the thing about food shopping, let's say you're buying cereal, right? If you know the color of your cereal box, your system one brain rejects anything that's not the color of the box. Just automatically, it doesn't even consider it worthy of shopping, right? It rejects and dismisses system one. Now, if you're looking for a new cereal, and you want to compare the nutritional value of the two cereals, now you got to switch to system two. System two has to work hard. System one is your natural, right? And so you're looking at the nutritional value, and you have to be slow, you have to be logical, you have to be contemplative. When we shop, we reject a whole lot of stuff. But when God loves, he's not a human being that he needs a system one or a system two brain. God is omniscient. God knows everything. And so if you get nothing else out of what I say this morning, understand this, that God will never reject you. God will never bypass you. God will never cast you off. You are loved. You are valued. And when God is shopping, he looks at each and every one of you just as you are. He loves you just as you are. Nothing you can do will make him love you less. And nothing you can do will make him love you more. He never bypasses you in the cereal aisle. Amen? Amen. So I needed to establish that. I needed to talk about shopping so we can get into our text and really understand what it means to be redeemed. If you do not know what it means, the word means redeemed, it means to be bought back. When we talked about the guitar, you pawn the guitar, and then when you get the money to redeem the guitar from the pawn shop, you have to pay the pawn price. Everybody with me so far? All right. Let's journey in this word together. Let's look at how Hosea had to buy his wife, redeem his wife, and then throughout the message, we will understand that all sales are final. Amen? Amen. Let's, 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 let's put slide one up on the board. Right? Uh, actually, you know what? Go back. Go back. Because let me lay out the text for you a little bit. Let me lay out the text for you a little bit. Thank you. Okay, Hosea. Hosea, not a, not a really popular or common book that, you know, we, we talk about in our book. Like John. It's not like John. All right, so here's what it is. It is a minor prophetic book. Not minor in terms of importance. Right? I, I, I will say this till I, God calls me home when it comes to the scriptures. If you don't understand what section you're in, it's going to be really hard to interpret it. Right? So you have the first five books, the books of Moses. Then you have the books of Old Testament history. Then you have the books of poetry, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, right? That's where you get poetry and music and wise sayings, right? And then you come to the major prophets, major because these books are huge, huge. Isaiah has like 66 chapters, uh, Jeremiah is like 64, is giant, right? And then you have 13 or 12, 12. You have 12 minor prophets. Hosea is one of them. A prophet, a prophet is not a soothsayer. It, it, it's, it's not like, uh, what was that person you used to call up and get your, your, your fortune? There, was, there used to be this line that you would call up. It's, it's not like, 
Madam something or Madam Cleo. Thank you. Thank you. That's not what a prophet is. They're not fortune tellers. They're not soothsayers. What they are are individuals that God says to speak truth to power. Truth to power. In the beginning, first verse, what did it say? Hosea was called by God to minister during the reigns of these four kings of Judah and one king of Israel. He was called to speak to the kings. Prophets speak truth to power. A whole lot of folk run around with the title prophet and they don't speak truth to nobody. Right? So, so speaking truth to power is the prophetic call. Now, when, he, when God calls Hosea, watch this. This is rough. Uh, this Christian journey is challenging. Can I get an amen on that? If you're going to love like God loves, it's, it's not always easy. It's not always sunshine and rainbows, lollipops, right? As soon as he calls Hosea, the first thing he does, he doesn't say, all right, I, I want you to get a mic and get up on the mountaintop and preach and let him see how, you, you know, how good you can say it, brother. No, he says, go get a promiscuous woman and marry her. This Christian journey has challenges to it. He's called by God to speak to kings, but in his own home, he's got to marry a promiscuous and, a, excuse me, and an adulterous woman. That is some really rough start to his ministry, right? At the start of his calling, and then not only does he tell her, does he tell Hosea to marry her, which is a big public function. It was like... When you think of Solomon and 700 wives, these are like legal arrangements. These are like how you make treaties. It's not like um, today where it's about love and you meet somebody, you fall in love. A lot of this was public facing to establish relationships between communities and, and tribes and things like that. So for him to marry her is a very public thing. Once he marries her, what does God say? Have children. Right? I'm establishing the text before we get to the points. I'm establishing the text. we got to be in this word so, so we can receive the points. He marries her. God tells Hosea, have children with her. And the first child, Jezreel, what does the text say? If you look at it carefully, it says she bore him a son. But this promiscuous, adulterous woman, with the next two children, it doesn't say she bore them to him. It says Gomer conceived. And then after she had weaned, Gomer conceived again. And if you were to read Hosea chapter 2, verse 4, the word of God declares that the children of Hosea are children of adultery. King James puts it really hard. It says, children of harlotry. Right? So he calls this man to be the prophet, to be the voice piece. He tells her, all right, he tells him, now go get publicly married. And then he tells him, call these, have babies and call them by this name and that name. And one of the things that, that is a very public thing is the father naming the children. Right, you got to understand a little bit about how women are viewed. Women are viewed as property. That's why they establish relationships when there's marriage. But the man named the child, and that is a proud moment for the father. But what if that child isn't yours? So you stick me, God, with the responsibility of the joyous moment, but that child's not mine. This is the backdrop for the text, right? Let's go to the verses. Let's look at these children's names, right? Because I want you to know that even though it starts out rough, when God redeems, he also reverses. Amen? Jezreel. Jezreel means God sows. But in the beginning, verse chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 4, what is God sowing? Punishment and putting an end to Israel. That's the name that God tells him, name your child. 
right? This beautiful moment where, you know how we have, like, um, those uh, parties where, like, gender reveals, and then you have the name. Like, think about it. That, oh, what are you going to name the, ch- the child? God sows destruction. Oh, you got a daughter. What's her name? Not loved. Oh, you got another son. What's his name? Not my people. I, I think of what this man is going through in his ministry, right? He's got a son named Jezreel, a daughter named Lo Ruama, which means not loved, and another son called Lo Ami, not my people. But when God redeems, he reverses. At the end of the chapter, verse 1, let's go to the next slide, point uh, continued, right? Where it was said, you are not my people. They will be called children of the living God. Great will be the day of Jezreel. And say to my brothers, you are my people. And say of your sisters, you are my loved one. When God redeems, he reverses. No matter where you are, no matter how dark you're stuck in a chain, locked in a cave, no matter how destitute you could be, addicted, cracked out, smoked out of your mind, an alcoholic, drunk, no matter where you are. God will get there. God will redeem, and he will reverse you. What they said about you, they will have to take it away. They called you not my people. You are my people. They called you not loved. You are loved, my loved one. You called you destruction, and God sows everything to end. But you will be children of the living God. I need somebody to touch somebody and say, I've been redeemed. God has reversed my story. God has reversed my situation. But it didn't happen yet. See, where it was said, they will be. They will be. They will be. And some of us are stuck in that dark time. But you got to just hold on. Change is coming. The prophecy is there. God uses Hosea to say, yeah, you got these kids. Two of them ain't yours. Yeah, you got this wife. She with another man. But. This, not, this is not how the story will end. When God redeems, he reverses. No matter how much you're stuck in the mud, reverse. Let's go to the next uh, point. So that's reversal, right? Now it's time for repayment. We talked about the pawn shop. And pawning is always a high-cost transaction. Let's break this down because this is rough too. Marriage, public. Socially public. Naming the children, socially public. Now, two chapters into his ministry, he's got to go redeem his wife from another man's house. Very public. All on display. They don't, you don't need the gossip. You don't need the telephone. You don't need the gossip line. Everybody already knows that she is loved by another man and that she's an adulteress. Because when he goes to redeem her, he knows exactly where to go. He knows exactly the price. It's all laid out, right? But the challenge is, right? Go show love to your wife again. There is a cost to this ministry thing. There is a cost to this Christian thing. There is a cost to this faith thing, right? Look at the cost to Hosea. She, he knows. God, this is God telling him. Your wife is loved by another man. You're home alone, probably with the kids, and she's with another man being loved. calls him to this. God tells him this is the fact. She is an adult. So, so, so even though he's not in the house with her and the other man, when God says she is an adulteress, that leaves no doubt. And you got to understand that this is exactly how it's meant to be, that even though we may be adulterous, even though we may be unfaithful, even though we may be loved by another that's not God. God is still going to love us. Man of God, Mr. Preacher, Hosea, Mr. Prophet, Hosea, you got to love her as I love her. 
even though she rejects you, even though she turns to others and worships, they get it, they get it on, they get, they get down. The sacred raisin cakes? Oh, you got the sacred, the sacred raisin cakes? Right? They are celebrating other gods, the Israelites. And it is an image that God gives Hosea to understand what's going on with his wife and the other man. Now, I don't mean to make it gender specific, right? But I can talk about it because the culture of the day was really male-dominated and gender Gender specific, it was like, you know, there wasn't equal rights, there wasn't DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging. They didn't have that back then. So for the man who has a wife who is his property legally, have his wife with another man, the whole community knows it socially, and they are getting it in, sacred raisin cakes, that is brutal. But God commands him. You need to love her as I love, not a bitter, not a I'm going to run your name through the ringer, not I'm going to bring up every time you made a mistake, every time I talk to you. I'm not going to hold your sin against you. As far as the east is from the west, that's how much you're going to forgive her. That's how much you're going to give her grace. That's how much you're going to give her peace. That's how much you are going to put her sin in the sea of forgetfulness and remember it no more. Let me ask you something, church. What is your faith costing you? Because we are disciples. We have to be like Hosea. And if you can look to the person to your left and hold a grudge, and you can look to the person to your right and be judgmental, you have not loved with the love of the Lord. And that's why churches become empty. That's why church life becomes stale. Because we don't have a love that says, you can reject me. You can resist me. You can hurt me. And I will still love you with the love of the Lord. You start loving like that, this place will be full. You start loving like that, we'll change the world forever because it's a godly type of love. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, repayment. Uh, continue. Woo. I bought her. That's Hosea. He, he's recording this in history forever. You, the, how long? The Bible's been around since 325 A.D. People have been reading his adult, and even more than that, because I'm just taking the Bible time. I mean, this is an Old Testament book. They circulated that. He's telling everybody, confessing. I bought her for 15 shekels of silver. Say 15 silver pieces. Amen. Now, think about how humiliating it is to carry 430 pounds of barley. See, the 15 silver pieces, yeah, can I have my wife back? All right, you know, you can kind of hide that. The wagons with the barley that you're pulling up to the man's house to redeem your wife, everybody's going to see the mules and the horses and the, what, oxen, 430 pounds of barley, right? But watch this. Al, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. Do you know what the value of 430, pound, 430 pounds of barley is? It's 15 shekels. Another 15 silver pieces. Al, you ready to get, get excited? That's 30 silver pieces. That is the price of betrayal. On Easter Sunday, this man stood up here and took you from Genesis all the way to John and broke down what 30 silver pieces meant. It was betrayal. That is the price of betrayal. But the 30 silver pieces that, Ho that Hosea had to use to buy back his wife Gomer is the same 30 silver pieces that Judas used to betray Jesus. Some on, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. The price of redemption is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It will always cost the same price that Jesus had to be paid to, so he could be betrayed. Betrayal in Hosea. Betrayal in the Gospels. 30 silver pieces. 30 silver pieces. But he paid it. He redeemed her. And then here's, here's where, if you don't shout now, I don't know if you are capable of shouting. 
after he pays for her publicly with the big wagons and the 30 silver pieces, he tells her, live with me. Don't do what you used to do. But I will behave the same way towards you. Though you were unfaithful, so unfaithful, I had to buy you. I still will be faithful to you. How many times in a marriage does somebody make a mistake and the other one make it worse by getting revenge? You hurt me. Hurt people do what? He doesn't do that here. He says, you hurt me. You betrayed me. It cost me my pride. It cost me my money. It cost me my time because I had to leave my home to come get you to bring you back. But don't do what you used to do. And I was just asking. But he's telling her, I will be that way towards you. I will love you the way the Lord loves Israel. Okay? It is a high cost transaction. If you're not willing to give up your pride, if you're not willing to give up your time, if you're not willing to give up social media, TV, anything like that, then that's the same thing that led Israel astray. That's why this whole situation happened. It's because Israel chased after things other than God. They let other things separate them from the love of God, and this man had to show all of us, what our redemption story is. I'm about through. Let's go to the last point. Thank you. To God be the glory. We had reversal, right? We had repayment. Now we have reception. Why were we redeemed? Why were we bought back? Why did Jesus have to be betrayed for 30 silver pieces and then bruised, battered, and beaten? He redeemed us so we could receive God in us. Not a temple, not 750 Marn Highway, not building in bricks and mortar. He redeemed us. So he could keep a promise that he made a long time ago. A promise to the nation of Israel. A promise to Abraham that said, by faith you are justified. Abraham believed God and it was credited him as righteousness. But what happened? The law came in afterwards. The law is that man that was with Gomer. The law is that man that was holding on to Gomer. The law is that man that hugged Gomer tight. But the Lord said, I will redeem my people. I will go buy them back. So that it's not about the law. And it's not about a building. And it's not about a tabernacle. It is about this body that I will live in in through my spirit and through the spirit you will have joy through the spirit you will have peace through the spirit you will be something that you've never been before somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm done praise team come up but how did he redeem us how did he pay the price Jesus bought us with his blood it's time to celebrate Jesus bought us with his blood, and his blood bought our blessings. His blood bought our peace. His blood bought our salvation. His blood bought our deliverance. His blood bought our prosperity. His blood bought our peace. His blood brought our power. His blood brought our resurrection. And all sales are final. All sales are final. You've been redeemed. You've been redeemed. You've been changed. You're not going back. You'll never be the same. He picked you up. He turned you around. You are now holy. You are now righteous. You are now everything that God intended you to be. Because his blood bought your blessings and all sales. May God bless you. We'll do the prayer after. Praise team, take it away. Let's celebrate. Yeah. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe.
Hallelujah. 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 He lives because he first died. Right? I know a man with holes in his hand. I know a man with a hole in his side. I know a man with holes in his feet because they hung him high and stretched him wide. I know a man with scars on his forehead because he wore a crown, not of a king, but a crown of thorns. Our Redeemer lives, but he first died, and it is his blood that bought us and yes, our redemption. Yes, yes, now, I don't care where you are in your life, what situation you're in. The text never said Gomer did anything, but God loved her. He sent Hosea to marry her, to redeem her, and to bring her back. So I don't care if you're male or female, we all got some Gomer in us. Amen. Let's be sure that we receive the salvation and redemption that God gave to Gomer. And this is how we do it. Let's put the prayer on the board. If you want eternal life, if you want salvation, if you've never accepted, and I'm talking to people online too, 
excuse me, if you've never accepted the free gift of salvation, he redeemed us from the law. Stop trying to be holy yourself. Stop trying to earn your salvation yourself. You can't do it. It's not the way it's done. His blood bought our blessing. Our blessing is eternal life. All you have to do is pray and believe. Amen. You will receive. Remember reception? All you have to do to get this supernatural power of the Holy Spirit is believe that Jesus died. Let's talk about it. Father, let's pray this prayer. And if you've never prayed it before, come let me know. Father, I know that I have sinned. Father, because I sinned, I need a Savior. You can say it along with me. It's on the screen. Father, I believe that Jesus is our Savior. Father, I believe Jesus is your one and only Son. Father, I believe that Jesus died for my sins on Calvary's cross. Father, I believe he rose from the dead on the third day. Father, I believe Jesus is coming back again. Father, you are now Lord of my life. Father, I've confessed with my mouth and believed with my heart, so I rejoice because I am saved. Everybody say, If you prayed that for the first time, come see me. I'm not leaving anywhere. I'm not leaving soon. We have a youth ministry meeting, but that would take place first. So if you have never prayed that before or you are not sure and you need to talk, that is priority. Youth ministry, you, we can wait, right? We, uh, all right. So let us receive salvation. Amen. Amen. All right, as we stand, if you're able, throughout the building, I will give us our final blessing. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and turn his face towards you and give you peace. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. I'll put holy ground here.